welcome to the podcast everyone this is the first episode of 2020 the new decade so happy new year and you're all very welcome here <coughs> i have a few little things that i would like to show you um including this um felix swear that i finished just before christmas i think this is my second one of these and it's knit in um let lope let lope yep um in the burnt heather color way i think and um yeah as i said i knitted one of these before and i think i'll knit a third one um the patterns by amy christophers and it's just a really easy nice wearable kind of loose-ish sweater so um that's my only finished object i think yeah um over the holidays i was i was off for nearly three weeks ish the first week i was sick so <laughs> that wasn't great and the two weeks after that um i had off uh, but i was still kind of recovering i had like a flu sort of thing so um I didn't feel like doing making anything when I wasn't well so I had like a good week and a half that I was um, productive I would say with making things so yeah so I finished this I must have started it at the start of December I can't really remember but they're really quick to knit because it's like iron weight um, so it didn't take long at all and the first one I knit in like a week or something but I really like it um, I made the cuffs a little bit longer in this one and I can also do this if I, I have this thing about, um, I'm not really that keen on having a sweater that's like down to my wrist because it really annoys me when I'm knitting or like doing something with my hands. So generally I like like this length, like seven eighths, I think that's what people call it. Just feels more practical. So I did this and I like that and I just knitted my previous one a bit shorter so it just kind of ends here um yeah so enjoyed knitting this and I will be knitting a third one I think just because they're so wearable and I slightly did panic knit them because I was like oh I need like a couple of jumpers in my wardrobe like just really hard wearing every day kind of ones so <clears throat> this is my only finished object um, this is my nearly finished object so I got really into crochet over the holidays it was just really easy and I didn't have to like really think about it which I liked and I was knitting stuff from scraps so I'll just show you my squares um, this was a kind of crazy one using up a lot of ends so I have like six in total um, be nice to get a video of them all together to see what they look like. I think this is my favourite one. This is Jasmine, Honeysuckle and Festive Nights. Those three colourways. So yeah, like I had like scraps and bits and pieces left over in samples. So I just thought I'll knit them up into uh, squares and sew them together and I'll have a nice blanket. So it'll be like a scrappy blanket. Um, I quite like this one too. They're all different apart from two, which are the same, which makes the blanket, maybe it will make the blanket look kind of weird. Maybe I should do nine and do another two the same. I might do that actually, it would make it bigger as well. But the squares are a fairly large size. So this is the one that I have two of. So yeah, this has been one of my like longer term goals. I've been wanting to try and teach myself to crochet for ages. And um, before I learned to knit, I learned how to crochet. Um, and then when I started knitting, I completely forgot and like I couldn't do it. And I couldn't get the tension right because it was in my other hand. And it was just, um, it was just kind of like, felt really awkward and weird. But then I just like really wanted to try it again just to see if I could get into it and now I've really got into the crochet. So I love it. It's just really, if you need something like easy and simple to do and you don't have to count anything, yeah, I'm all over that. 
So I really enjoyed that. And I just like the big pile of them. I think they look so cool. So as you can see, I've got some ends to weave in. And then I'm going to try and crochet them all together. That's not something I've tried to do before. So that'll be kind of interesting to see how that works. I don't know how crocheters normally do it if you block the squares to make them all the same size and then crochet them together. Or if you just sew them together. That probably works if you don't have the same amount of stitches. But they're the same size. Because my tension changed quite a lot. When I started it was really tight and now it's like quite loose like my knitting. Like I'm quite a loose knitter. So that's an almost finished object, so it's quite fun um, and I'll try and show you a little video of what they all look like set out. Um, I did also start a DK weight um, scrappy blanket. I think for this one I possibly might just keep going round and round and round, I don't know what would look nice. Um, I got this... Uh, crochet hook so it looks really nice wooden one it's I can't remember the oh pearls crochet I think it says um but I have to say this crochet hook and this yarn I don't think it really I mean it's fine but it doesn't I think it would really benefit from a nice metal needle because the yarn is quite like not sticky but it's kind of grippy um, I think probably because it's wool and spun it would be nice to have a slightly more smooth tip um, but yeah I'll do with this and then if I come across a crochet hook that is the right size I may purchase it or I often find things like this in charity shops or pots at the back of wherever I find random things and um, use them. Um, I have been trying to <clears throat> get more organised with my knitting stuff and um, I put all my stitch markers and bits and pieces, my little notions, in this jam jar which is really nice. It feels very liberating to have everything in one place. Looks like a lot of stitch markers doesn't it? Um, but this has been really handy and then I've just been storing my blankets and projects in these big baskets. Um, I've, they just sit beside the sofa and I can just pick up whatever. So the next thing I want to talk about is my new yarn which I am so thrilled and excited about. Um, it is a 100% wool non superwash nylon free Jacob's yarn. So this is what it looks like. So the fibre for this was grown in Ballymena, just outside Ballymena in a place called Slat. Um, and I think there's like 16, 15 or 16 sheep. And um, I saw them in the field and find out who they belong to and asked the farmer if he would sell me his clip and he said yes. So I bought the clip and then I took all, I took the fleece um, to my granny's big shed and me and my dad between us we lay it all out, picked out the dirty bits and then packaged it up. By dirty bits by the way I mean like poo and straw and random stuff that found its way in there, which is a very um, down to earth sort of job. <laughs> and um, But to be honest, I can only do it for a couple of hours and then I get bored. So um, I had to kind of take it in stages. Um, but there wasn't too much of the Jacobs anyway. Um, so then we packaged it all up and you have to book like a pallet to take it because it's quite bulky, you know. You can't send it by the normal post or anything. So the pallet came and collected it and delivered it to a little kind of artisan mill in Wales, in West Wales I think. 
and um, they spun it. They're a they're a woolen woolen spinning mill, and I said I wanted a four ply. <clears throat> Just I thought it would be the most versatile weight, and they were able to do that, and they got it to three hundred and ninety nine point five meters per hundred grams. So basically four hundred meters per hundred grams, and. This, I, I really think this is my favourite yarn so far. I love the colour. I love the texture and the character of the yarn. It's really... It has character, but it feels kind of... Now, I didn't think about all the describing words I was going to use when I hit play there. It's a, I would say it feels like a cosy yarn, one that would keep you warm. Um, I would say that it, depending on what size of needle you knit with, it doesn't have loads of drape, which means it's going to be good for jumpers. Um, because generally you want something that has a bit of structure. Well, I do anyway, when I knit um, sweaters and stuff. Um, I don't like something too like floppy. I like it nice and like cozy and I would say that it feels so I've said that it feels cozy. I would say that it also feels I would say it feels woolly. Um I would have no problem me I, I mean, I wear let low bait against my skin, so obviously I would have no problem wearing this next to my skin. Um, it's a very... It's, it's, it's hard to describe. <laughs> it's hard to describe, but it's really, really nice. And when I opened the bag the first time and I seen it, I was so happy with it and I was so relieved that it was nice because I did not know how it would turn out. Um... I would say that it's obviously it's woolen spun so it's quite voluminous, voluminous and it's just has a really nice texture and I like it a lot. So anyway I knit a few swatches. Most patterns are knit with um, like worsted spun yarn or are designed in worsted spun yarn so the gauge can be a little off when you swatch for a pattern and I'm a loose knitter anyway. So I swatched for the scale gra um, by Albina McLaughlin who is LB Handlets. She is a local designer and I had seen this sweater at Woolen last year I think it was launched. Um, it was originally knit in Townhouse Yarns um, in one of their special bases. I think it was spun in Donegal Woolen Mill, I'm not sure. Um, so anyway, I seen the pattern and liked it and I just bought it recently. I, I always swatch before I buy the pattern just in case like it doesn't work or something. So this is what it looks like so far. So it's got a really nice lace section, obviously you can't really see it because it's not been blocked. But um, I'm really pleased with it so far, so far, apart from the collar. And you'll see it with this collar as well. Whenever I knit top down sweaters, the neck seems to expand, even though the rest of the garment is the right size. So I don't know if it's the cast on that I use or if anyone else has this problem, but I think what I'm gonna do is when I have uh, the body finished, I'm going to go in and pick up the stitches and snip out the first cast on row and then do a few rows decreasing. So just to make it more, I like it more like round my neck. And the style of the scale gra after this lace section is kind of A line. And in the pattern, it's like three quarter length sleeves with a lace section at the bottom. I might make it seven eighths without the lace section. I'm not sure. I might do a little bit of the lace section at the bottom. Because um, <clears throat> as I said before about my whole thing with sleeves. So yeah, I'm liking how it's looking so far. Um, and I think the lace looks really good with this, with this yarn. It looks, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it, but it's just really, 
I just think it looks really nice. There's something between the the interface between I hesitate to use the word rustic but like real woolly yarn and lace. I just think it's really interesting and it looks really nice. Um so yeah. Um so in the yoke section there's these gathering stitches which were literally the slowest thing in the world to knit but it was a new skill so I was really excited to learn how to do them and it's kind of mad you basically like knit three together and then you knit into the same three stitches like another three or four times um, so it's an increased stitch I suppose but it's really interesting and it's a lovely pattern and I'm enjoying it so far so um, and I find, I one of the reasons I picked this pattern as well is because I've knitted so much easy stuff and crochet and so much easy stuff. I just was like really want to get stuck into something that was a bit more difficult and a bit more interesting. So um, I didn't make too many mistakes on this yoke. I think I thought I made mistakes and then I got my stitch markers and put them all around so I could, I knew if I was making a mistake when I came to it, I was able to fix it. So, yeah, I'm really pleased with this and how it's going. I think it will probably only take another skein and a half, maybe, to finish it. Depends how long I make the arms, I suppose, but... Yeah, so, I just think it looks really nice and it has a real comfort and texture. I was, that's how I would describe it, a very comforting texture. Um, yeah, so um, I'll maybe um, insert some footage of me going to visit the sheep. I seen them recently. They were in a, a field near where I was and I seen them and I knew who they belonged to. So I caught some footage, um, like I knew it was the same sheep as I had got the fleeces off because that's where I spotted them the first time round. So I've got like 190 skeins of this, so that's quite a lot for my limited edition. It should last for quite a while. Uh, some people have been asking, are you going to dye it? <clears throat> I think the colour is so nice as it is. I feel like if I dyed it, I would ruin it. It's such a nice... The shade of it is like... I would say it's slightly more grey scale than brown although it's like a warmish grey and it has so many different tones between like white and black in it it's really really nice like on the individual you probably can't see it on this because it's not great quality but um the video is not great quality but the i just think the color of it's so nice i don't think i need to dye it and probably you would enjoy having something that's um, undyed as well because you like the Cumbrian undyed. So that's what I'm thinking. Though maybe I should just dye one skein and see what happens, see what it looks like. But I really like it how it is so I might just leave it. And yeah, for 2020, as I was saying earlier, I was trying to put my schedule together I was finding it kind of tricky, um, I think mainly because, well I, like I said, I have some ideas um, that I want to do or things I want to launch next year, but I think when you really get down to it, like when you take away all the like clubs and everything, I think at the heart of things what I'm really interested in is, I'm really interested in sourcing wool and processing wool from places that I know. And this is like my heart product. Do you know, like, this is what interests me the most. So I think if I'm being honest with myself, like, like this even excites me more than the dying. Like, I don't want dying to literally take over my life. And when this is really the thing that really, really interests me. So, I'll probably just be spending time trying to source nice fibres locally for y'all <clears throat> and 
I want to do more vlogging in 2020 because I really enjoy it as well and I think it's really fun and it's a nice way to connect with people and really visual way as well. On Instagram I feel like everything's so short and you can't really get into talking about something. Um, so yeah, more vlogging, more um, local yarns, uh, a bit of dyeing, maybe some clubs. Hopefully I'll do another collaboration with US Rule. I really enjoyed that. I think I will do the advent calendars again. Um, they were, 15 of them nearly broke me, I have to say, and that was only 15. <laughs> But I've got the skein twister now so that will make that part of it a lot easier. So I might do a few more and I want to keep things exciting for myself. I don't want to hem myself in too much to my schedule but I need to have some idea of what's going on. So if there's something you want to see in 2020 or if there's something you want to see more of or less of or a collaboration you'd like to see or a club you'd like to see just let me know in the comments below and I will take it on board <clears throat> but yeah this is where I really see Woolly Mammoth Fibre Company going local fibres from um, local farms so that's what I'm really interested in um, so what else have I got to show you this is a swatch I knit in the Jacobs I think this was like 3.75 or 3.5 so it's really it's a lovely gauge actually it's nice and like lightweight um the needle size i'm knitting these on is 2.75 um but i think this is a, a lovely lovely lightweight gauge actually for the jacobs so yeah, maybe I will experiment also this year with a design. I don't know, I'm not a designer, but I kind of fancy the idea of trying the process just to see what it's like. Um, but there's so many designers out there and they're all so good. I sort of think, well, is there any point? But I think I would be mostly doing it for myself just to see if I can challenge myself and do it. Um, what other plans have I for 2020? To be honest with you, I almost, when I was making the schedule, part of why I found it difficult was because I had kind of forgotten what I did last year. So if you care to remind me, I would be very appreciative of that also. And yeah, I think that's pretty much everything I have to show you at the moment. Um, I have a lot of footage in here from over Christmas and stuff, so I hope you enjoy that. It's been really fun to take a few videos um, when I was out and about with friends and stuff. Um, yeah, enjoy. So I'm out here, um, I, I'm out at the moment and um, I just thought I would show you since the sheep that I got the Jacobs from are close by, um, I thought I would just show you where they are and what they look like and um, where they're grazing at the moment. This isn't their, they're out in a field that's being let that belongs to some kind of relation of my, it's my dad's cousin's husband, I believe. <laughs> so I thought I would show you the sheep. Um, they actually have an organic farm uh, that sells ice cream. So someday maybe I'll show you that. And the place I am now is called Larry Ford. There's the fort there. And um, the organic farm is just there.
so this is the sheep here, the Jacobs, that your, um, your wool has come from. Um, they're grazing in this field. They actually, um, this is not the farm that they are, that they're from. They're um, another man um, that I know owns them, but they're grazing in this field that belongs to this organic farm that I was telling you about that make ice cream. And there's 17 of them here. I thought there was 18 of them, but um, there must be one less somewhere else. There was 18 last year, so I don't know what happened to the one. Well, we think there was 18. I'm not exactly sure. My dad thinks there was 18. So yeah, so I just heard back from the mill and the wool will be coming next week. And um, the guy at the mill said the yarn was a beautiful color because you can see they're white and black and brown and um, he said it turned out very well and he was very pleased. So the yarn was spun in wheels. That's basically the closest place that I could get it spun at this little artisan mill, which I hope to visit um, in the spring next year. Um, so if I do go to that, I will definitely show you around that as well. Um, I think I might go by bike and boat. Maybe with my dad, I don't know, let's see. <laughs> Could be fun, I'll do a tour of Wales. <laughs> um, and yeah, I can show you around the mill, hopefully. So last year when I first seen the sheep, when I first discovered them before I figured out who owned them, they were grazing in this field beside the river here. And it just looks so idyllic, it was really beautiful. And um, they were, they were up around this scrubby bit and I spotted them. I think I seen their horns first of all. And so I went into the organic farm. They have a, um, a cafe. So I went in there and started asking around who, who did the sheep belong to? And um, there was two people in the cafe who knew who they belonged to and it was a relation of theirs and they were a relation of ours. So it's a very kind of... <laughs> So anyway, I got his phone number and um, I rang up the farmer and said um, are these sheep yours and what do you do with the wool and um, would you like to sell me some uh, wool, some of your clip? And um, he said, yeah, sure. So uh, yeah, that's the story of where I got the wool. Um, it's very exciting. So yeah, I hope you like the yarn. So I also did a massive office clear out yesterday which felt amazing and I suppose it's not quite a spring clean, it's more of a winter clean. <laughs> um, so hopefully that will make my workflow a lot nicer. Um, so basically it was such a mess before and nothing was really in, its, in a good place for me to package or to get things. So I'm just going to show you what it looks like. You might have seen it in my Instagram stories already but I'll show you again just because I'm very proud of it. So up here is like knitting patterns, businessy stuff, labels and sample size boxes. And then I have my magazines and notebooks which are in the shop. 
and then I have some paper, some boxes, um, my cake thing, and my Swift, um, guillotine, labels, scrap paper for writing notes and stuff on, some more samples, some swatches, um, bags, uh, postal stuff. Then I have stock here. These are the big bags that I take stuff to the post office in. And I moved all my envelopes from here over to here because I thought it'd be handier. But unfortunately, this shelf is actually slightly fallen down, which is a bit dangerous. So this is like my packing station here. Um, it's not very big and it's slightly frustrating sometimes, but what can you do? You just have to work with what you have. Um, then I have, well, this is all computer and stuff, so all stays the same, but I swapped around my little printing station and my sample reel. And this is just like filing kind of stuff. So, yeah. So yeah, and then this is my like computer station and this is for printing labels. This is my scales and then I have um, my label printer for the labels on the schemes and I just have a normal chair I don't have a computer chair my sewing machine bin yeah so that's pretty much it and it's all nice and tidy a few materials in there so yep I'm very pleased with this and I think it will be good if I can keep it tidy Perfect. What are you up to today? You chilling? You chilling out? Right? Is that your favourite spot? Perfect. Do you want to go outside? So I also thought I would show you um, my new skein twister which has been good so far. I only tried it out a few times. So I thought I'd put a little video in here to show you what it's like and how it works. I'm not very slick at it yet but um, yeah it's quite fun so I'll show it to you now. So this is the foot pedal. It's just like a small sewing machine pedal. And um, this is the skein twister, it's got this big old hook here and <clears throat> you can set it to press and hold which is when you put your foot on and it goes and you take your foot off and it stops or you can put it to so many seconds so like minis and stuff take longer and then more woolier skeins seem to take less so that's quite interesting. Um, I didn't get their clamps. I had some clamps already in the house that I got for something else so I decided just to use those and I have it pinned or I have it clamped onto my um, Billy bookcase which um, has quite a lot of books in it so it doesn't seem to move although I would like to get a more sturdy place to put it but I don't know where exactly so I'll just do a little demo now and show you how it works. So I suppose I should show you how I normally do it, although um, I just do this, twist it up, twist it up, and then I can feel it when it gets to the right amount and it wants to twist. So I am pretty fast at it and pretty neat as well, but for minis it's really, because you have to twist so many times your arms get really tired, so that's basically kind of why I got this. I mean. I'm probably almost as quick doing these type of skeins by hand but also if your hands are really sweaty <clears throat> it's really annoying to do that because your hands kind of get stuck whereas with the skein twister 
your hands don't get stuck. So let me show you. We are on. So you put it on the hook like this and you tap the pedal. And then I actually just did this with the roll hands, so this won't be very slick. Sorry guys, I'm just switching over my finger <laughs> like this. I think this could actually do with a little bit more twist. Try that again. Through. I'm actually making quite a hash of this. It looks easier to do it by hand, but I think it will save my arms in the long run. So here we have it. So it looks the same as if I'd done it by hand, basically, which I'm happy about because I'm quite fussy about how they look. So I'll just do another one just to show you. Maybe I'll do this one a little bit quicker. 